Hi, I'm Anjali Rao in Seoul. Join me as Cole Haas takes us on a tour of the city and some of his creations. This is Talk Asia. Rem, welcome to the show. We're sitting outside the Transformer, which you designed to act as a space for different sorts of events. Just talk me through how it works. Um, the Para asked us uh, to uh, design uh, a facility for four different events. And uh, initially we tried to combine it in one kind of more or less flexible uh, entity. But uh, we didn't, uh, it didn't work because there are contradictory demands. So uh, rather than do a single uh, flexible entity, we would make a situation where we design a particular plan, a very specific plan for each of the events, and combine it in a single almost pyramid-like structure. And if any of the events is activated, you turn the entire structure so that the plan becomes a ground floor. And then if you need another event, you again turn the structure so that the other plan becomes a ground floor. What do you think then about um, this new breed of architect, the star architect, <laughs> that are so well, famous now that they're celebrities and you're one of them allegedly? Well, I, I've been uh, kind of on record uh, as, as being uh, deeply uh, unhappy and deeply uh, uncomfortable about that uh, kind of situation. Uh, because I think, you know, you know, every name describes a content. You know, and the content of Star, Arch Star Architect compared to the content of Architect is limited. You know? Nobody thinks that the star has good intentions. Uh, a star walks over you. Uh, a star is indifferent to what people think. My hope is that also through the current uh, complexity that uh, title will, will exit uh, discreetly and uh, disappear. Let me just quote something to you from a Britain's Guardian newspaper which was writing about you. It says, you are nothing if not a contradiction. A man who thrives on free thinking, he works happily for absolutist governments. An architect who claims to distrust fashions in design, he's responsible for some of the most eye-catching of all new buildings. Do you think you are a contradiction? Uh, well, I, th I think that uh, it's not possible to, to live in this age uh, if you don't have a sense of... Uh, uh, many contradictory forces, uh, uh, and, and I think that uh, architecture, you know, has both the privilege and the problem of, of being an intersection of economical issues, cultural issues, artistic issues, uh, sociological issues, political issues. Uh, so perhaps very few professions are actually, you know, in themselves already so uh, pulled apart. By, by different demands, or so, so submitted to, to radically different issues. Yeah. Each building has to be beautiful but cheap, and fast, but it lasts forever. Yeah. That, that is already an incredible battery of uh, seemingly contradictory demands. So yes, I, I'm definitely perhaps a contradictory person, but uh, I live in a very, operate in a very contradictory times. So what was the inspiration behind this then? Uh, well, I think uh, the point is that uh, Seoul is an unbelievably beautiful city because it's on this uh, exceptional side and you can see the mountains. Uh, I, I don't know a single campus in the world that has this uh, natural beauty. Uh, and, and of course this variety because now it's spring but in the winter it's really stark and really cold and really exceptionally uh, grim. Uh, so as you will see later, you know, at, at some point Kunle and I were looking from the building at the view and we were taping kind of the view so that you, we could give the windows different shapes. And that is also an, an, a unique part of how you can build things in, uh, in, in Asia. Because nowhere else would, would they allow architects you know, to, to be that you know, last minute to say, okay, this is the view. <laughs> right. yeah. So that was kind of really uh, wonderful. And so uh, since the environment is so beautiful, you know, the, we, we have lifted the building as much as possible off the ground so that you know, the, the nature penetrates uh, where it can. You still lecture at Harvard, I understand. Mm -hmm. What do you get from your exchanges with students? I, I started uh, teaching in Harvard because I, um, 
not so much because I have a kind of excess of knowledge, uh, but actually because I realized that there were certain things I didn't know. Uh, and Harvard was uh, enabling me to uh, define those subjects and then gave me every year a number of students that I could work with. So uh, in a certain way, we had a very exciting project. It was called Project uh, on the City. And so with those students, we would go, for instance, to the Pearl River Delta, or we went to Lagos. That is how I met uh, Kumla. So when you've you know, created a place like this and you come back to it, um, how does it make you feel? I mean, do, do you allow yourself to feel proud of what you've done? Uh, it, Pride is almost something we never feel. I mean, it sometimes can really... Uh, the, the, the building process is kind of very much fraught with difficulty until it's... So, so actually the moment of, of kind of resolution is you, you barely experience it because you're also involved again with the next thing. So it's, uh, I, I feel more surprised than anything else. <laughs> as if somebody else has done it.